Let's talk about the SimSync. It was introduced as a solution for scalability and uh, better uh, recoverability uh, for uh, MySQL replication around 2008 by Google engineers. Uh, solution was uh, not really based on some uh, academic research and uh, rather it was ad hoc uh, attempt to provide some of the good features and uh, while succeeding in making that uh, so it is really fast compared with synchronous replication that we now have around and uh, it scales quite well but the uh, recovery part remains uh, an issue or rather remained as we show in this presentation so uh, the issue that uh, we are discussing today uh, it deals with recovery with improved recovery that myself and Sujata Sivakumar entertained so we call that work a journey from semi-sync to three quarter thing yeah, hopefully through the presentation uh, the listeners uh, will be will appreciate that uh, increase and uh, uh, let us see how it will do in practice as well but first uh, to indicate uh, what is the issue we are dealing with let us uh, look at the regular commit protocol so on this following slide the magenta uh, user agent submits commit transaction to now a single server is in this uh, bl uh, blue color box so it has a uh, few agents uh, coordinator of two-phase commit protocol master uh, the whole box i call and it also has uh, engine uh, where a transaction gets prepared we also have another engine bin lock it's uh, a sort of a resource for two-phase commit protocol uh, at least in my projection in my description here so it also sort of prepares uh, to receive uh, right events right semantics events of the transaction into bin log after that uh, the third phase of the transaction commit runs to commit it finally it becomes committed officially in the engine uh, that uh, protocol uh, helps to recover in the following so say uh, master crash it um, somewhere uh, between say phases two and three uh, so transaction would be sitting in bin log and it is prepared state in InnoDB. In that case, uh, logic of recovery is very straightforward for any transaction of this type. So I depict them in a light green color. If uh, it has a representation in BinLock, then the rule is to commit. Otherwise, transaction gets rolled back. Now let us complicate and come closer to the semi-sync specifics so the user still submitting that transaction and it now you see two agents in blue color they uh, belong to one server and uh, there is also slave now resource that is uh, distributed out and maybe number of slaves actually I just depict only one here and uh, the same to face commit protocol executes uh, prepare on master uh, then uh, prepare and commit on slave uh, face logical face uh, logical clock two in green and circled uh, uh, it circled means green and uh, when slave receives it uh, it acts back to the master server and coordinator captures that acknowledgement to finally execute commit on master in case of uh, a crash uh, we should first notice that uh, the most critical part of the crash is uh, is here by analysis uh, uh, performed by a number of uh, users of semi-sync replication i also recommend 
to check uh, this nice blog by Jean-Francois Gany uh, that uh, describes the problem as well. Uh, so crash when transaction does not reach the slave still prepared on master and uh, remember that when it is pre mm, e when it is prepared on master, I also assume that it is been locked on master. So crash happens uh, at this time when it is extracted sort of from bin lock and never reaches slave. So in this case, uh, we arrive uh, at the following that master would have G hundred G stands for GTID and a small case G here indicates it is not committed. 100 stands for sort of seconds number of that GTID, so it is prepared. And at recovery, by recovery rules presented above, uh, it gets committed. It gets uh, from changes from that green color of doubt into blue color of committed state. But at the same time, if slave, a uh, previously gray colored slave, becomes a master at fill over, so becomes M with superscript 1, it would not, never have this hundred, hundredth of GTID. So we have add failover to, from M0 to M1, formally S, uh, transaction gets lost, and which is not good. And uh, so how are we going to do about it? Uh, first, let us look into the bin lock pipe. So bin lock represented as a pipe. We have uh, now I use another the notation here to depict uh, in G uppercase uh, to speak it uh, of it as committed. In smaller case uh, still preserving that green color uh, prepared transaction. I and K stands for sequence number so sub subscripts is just sequence number. So bin lock normally contains uh, transactions in the following uh, at any time at uh, server execution um, in, as the following structure uh, a range of committed transactions and then uh, a range of uh, transactions in case of just single uh, engine uh, a range would be uh, not containing any committed ones so uh, if we have this G with superscript star uh, denoting the last committed, uh, so ending the committed range in bin lock. So after that, in case of single engine, we don't have any committed ones. So they will be all in small case. All the G100, 101 and so on would be small case in case of single engine. Uh, situation it gets complicated when transaction on the master consists of multiple branches, a branch per engine. In this case, a fully committed transaction would be uh, when each of the branches committed it. So like here, say one stands for InnerDB, two uh, superscript two stands for OxDB, maybe we have some other transactional storage engines uh, also installed and then up to from 1 to L, uh, we will have all the branches committed, then we can see the transaction as multi-engine transaction also as committed. Uh, here I represent with superscript uh, I, engine I, and uh, uh, what is important that at a recovery, so if we uh, repeat the previous slide, uh, then at recovery, uh, the uh, transactions in doubt would actually not uh, be all in small cases, uh, but uh, could be like uh, presented as vectors uh, with indexes of different case. So some of the engines may have committed, uh, and I'm speaking about recovery, and some may have n not. Uh, so this sort of structure had been locked, we would have after the maximum that uh, on the previous slide G99 is the maximum. So 
in it uh, all the branches committed. But the following could be uh, like this uh, mix of committed and not committed branches. And those, those by recovery protocol uh, that we designed and implemented, uh, uh, we must treat this situation as transaction to be committed. So it's uh, doubt uh, should be resolved to commit it. But task to, uh, yeah, and then uh, if that transaction is to be committed, uh, it will also affect computation of that max uh, committed range. And uh, that basically represents a task that uh, we dealt with. And uh, uh, if you need any details of how it was technically done, I must refer you to that uh, 21117 uh, MDEF that myself and Sujata Sivukumar implemented. Uh, that's a joint effort work. Uh, so uh, what uh, recovery works now to respect uh, semi-sync logics and uh, in including multiple uh, branches in transaction? We, after computing uh, the max committed, say it in single engine case, uh, in simple case, would be like this, the picture. So all grain transactions would be cut off. You see them cut, it, cut off. And uh, bin lock would officially end at G99. So we arrived basically at solution that uh, uh, we implemented. And uh, if uh, the old primary uh, indeed accurate in the circumstances that I describe it. Uh, so it can be only re reintroduced as a semi-sync slave. The server post-crash recovery of the server configured with uh, semi-sync slave enabled on ensures uh, through that MDEF 21.117 that the server will not have any extra transactions. That old master will never have them and uh, configure it as semi-sync replica servers bin log gets truncated to discard transactions proven not to be committed in any of the branches if they are multi-engine those transactions uh, for me it remains to uh, refer you to some of the interesting documents i really like uh, the listeners to check unless it's done. So great source of understanding of two-phase commit protocol and its deficiencies, its uh, various workarounds. Uh, this is a book uh, by Bernstein, Hazilakos and Goodman, Concurrency Control Recovering Database Systems. So our work, uh, of course, uh, though uh, it's not really that well structured uh, as academic work referred above, uh, please check updated documentation about semi-sync and I already presented you a nice uh, compilation of uh, semi-sync features and deficiencies by Jean-Francois Gany. We're looking forward to improve uh, this part, recovery part, uh, to capture uh, less strict uh, durability guarantees or uh, options for the uh, engines that is uh, roll forward recovery that was presented earlier in spring time uh, this type of event uh, we're still uh, working on it and uh, this recovery should also uh, understand that engine could be configured uh, not to uh, write uh, any prepared image after each prepare uh, request so we could relax that and still recover for some missing as well. So thanks uh, for your listening. And uh, this work also requires uh, thanking MariaDB engineering team and personally Sergei Golubchik for a very substantial review. Uh, Andre, nice chatting to you. Uh, thank you for presenting at uh, MariaDB Fest 2021. Uh, 
I think you had a very, very good presentation. Uh, and I thank you for this. Uh, because uh, the, this Q&A session will be pre-recorded, I'll try to put myself in the uh, shoes of the audience and uh, try to understand the presentation for myself uh, as, as uh, good as I can. And uh, maybe this way I catch as many potential questions as possible for, from the audience because we, we, we do currently don't have any questions from the audience. Uh, so uh, be because of this, I prepared kind of a list of questions that I had wh when I watched your video. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll try to, to get some, some, some good answers from you. Uh, but thank you for, for presenting. Uh, and I would like now to, to move to the, to the questions, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, sure. So basically, uh, I think the presentation was quite technical. Uh, and it is possible, very probably actually, that some users are not that familiar with, uh, with application internals. And I would like to hear from you maybe a summary or something like that uh, on uh, uh, how will this uh, semi-sync replication work that you've done with Sujata uh, will help the, the MariaDB users? Well, uh... I tried to yeah, speak some words about um, the problem uh, that we addressed. Uh, and the people already found this workaround using uh, heuristic uh, recovery, uh, which we never designed for this purpose. Uh, yet, uh, there were unhappy people uh, anyway. And uh, that uh, solution that they uh, and, uh, devised uh, was of course limited. It had to remove uh, binary logs from that server that is recovering. So this is uh, the feature that uh, we introduced this recovery feature. Uh, it leaves intact uh, the binary logs of the crashed master uh, and it's close to be uh, called a universal solution, but it, it should not, as it, uh, the users may uh, analyze and understand that uh, the master still has to be introduced as a slave. So that's a limitation we yeah, yeah, are bound to. But other than that, uh, it's, yeah, it's quite a, it should ease the uh, life of the semi-sync users. And uh, more than that, it also uh, advances or shows uh, a further, uh, sort of this spreads our horizon, I would say. Yeah. That's so we know what to do next. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Uh... Also, you kind of served served me the next uh, the next question a bit because I, I liked a lot in the presentation the joke about uh, the three quarter sync replication and I couldn't <laughs> stop myself uh, uh, asking uh, what what was your, the, what what were the points in your mind that triggered that joke that the transitioning from semi sync to three quarter sync what 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 made it three quarter sync replication? Yeah, uh, that's good question. Uh... Well, of course, I afforded this metaphor, uh, maybe uh, abusing the <laughs> these arithmetical rules, but uh, uh, who knows? Uh, some would, uh, some users that struggle with recovery, they now happy, and uh, um, they may uh, the application may be, you know, already configured or designed to provide synchronicity as, they, as it needs the application. Uh, but uh, the same thing, um, it's um, a framework uh, design, uh, never considered some uh, important features in order to be called fully synchronous. So, and uh, now having a recovery working, uh, we actually can uh, focus on that part. So it's really a, uh, some technically not that difficult uh, 
because we're already having communications. So we should uh, implement it that, um, say, communication library is in already. Uh, we don't, we just need to make it uh, working a specific way uh, that, say, sustains uh, partitioning in network so that uh, slave and masters, uh, slaves and masters could uh, come back to compo compose a uh, configuration. And uh, yes. yeah, uh, there are this sort of logics not in place now, but so maybe that's about one quarter. <laughs> That yeah, I, I see. I see. So that that uh, that that triggered the the transitioning, uh, and and you you say uh, how, how far would you think we are from uh, with semisync from reaching uh, the the uh, the full uh, the fully sync replication uh, properties? Yeah, that will take us, of course. Uh, 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 at current uh, state, semi-sync provides some uh, uh, validation to master to commit a transaction. But uh, there are some um, rules designed, almost hard-coded, how to behave in case of say, slaves never acknowledge transaction from the master. In this case, there is this timeout and the uh, master commits uh, so that breaks synchronization uh, guarantees because uh, it could be that uh, various scenarios could be considered where this behavior is in principle not correct. Uh, so um, we, we now should consider uh, how this acknowledgement system behaves and uh, yes. improve it. Uh, this is one thing. And second, which currently semi-sync misses, is um, automatic master election that can be also covered mm -hmm. with uh, some uh, pieces of logics. I see. Uh, but uh, would that be very complicated to, to implement? Well, what, what's, uh, your, uh, uh, what's, what's your instinct saying about this? Uh, algorithms very much developed, uh, we can refer to group communications uh, for a color or galera. Uh, so they basically implemented this sort of algorithm. Uh, yeah. How uh, we having this, uh, I don't know, advantage or specifics, how to call it, uh, having uh, communications already in place. We don't need to uh, write TCP protocol from scratch. <laughs> so we yeah. will do something on top of it. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Do you have anything? Uh, so that part uh, we again can compare it with the known yes yeah, synch uh, synchronous replication implementation that I just uh, named. Uh, they also have the specifics of uh, committing uh, committing transaction. Uh, in multi-master, sort of, well, supporting multi-master rather, uh, so that conflicts are detected and resolved. Uh, but we can also uh, sh uh, shortcut our ways uh, to not do that, to, to stick to the primary master initially. And then everything looks to be very much simpler uh, in order to implement those uh, parts that are missed. It's uh, awesome to hear that uh, the, the the ideas are put in place, and we we have a clear objective for the for the near future in in, in replication, and I, I like that uh, quite a lot. Uh, now I have a more uh, uh, technical question, and uh, because it's a bit longer, uh, I'd like to to ask you to not mind if I'll read the question because I noted it. It's something that didn't drink in my mind when I when I watched your video and the diagrams uh, with the the coordinator and the master and the big log, uh, bin log pipe, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll try to read it now so that I don't get it, uh, don't get the details wrong. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, uh, when you uh, display the uh, uh, the the multi branches uh, case uh, mm -hmm. with the vectors, multi transaction. What, yeah. what, yeah, so what I didn't understand is why is that the... the sorry, multi-engine, I want to say, sorry for interruption, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the multi-engine, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
So I didn't quite understand why is that the mixed vectors of the committed and not committed transact uh, uh, branches, because you, you you had a vector with mixed and and uh, with, with committed and not committed, a mixed a mixed vector. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at some point, you said uh, in the recovery protocol, those mixed vectors are considered like committed transactions, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. th this is a bit counterintuitive to me because you usually I would expect that uh, if one component of the vector is in doubt, like mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. in the video, the entire vector should be considered in doubt, uh, yeah. and that that that's why it, it didn't drink in my mind. It was not intuitive. Would, yeah. would you like to explain this a bit? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, considering the uh, size of the whole presentation. I didn't dwell into this part. Uh, it, it's not really too much practical, but uh, still, um, if we have resolved it, uh, then that just you know makes more confidence to the solution. And uh, according to well, we have thorough review process, and uh, I. Uh, I already spoke this gratitude words uh, to the reviewer, Sergei Galupchik. So this was analyzed very thoroughly, this part. Uh, so to the question, yes, uh, just compare a single case against multi multiple engine case. Uh, when in the single case, we have at least one prepared, and this is just only one engine. Then uh, the doubt is resolved automatically. Uh, yeah, so uh, in multi-engine case, uh, we have one engine, just one engine is enough when it is uh, committed, uh, is committed. Uh, then uh, we don't have way back. That, that's a constraint, a logical constraint we cannot uh, overcome. We have to consider it as committed and do our best to commit everything. So, mm -hmm. and uh, if you remember, on presentation, there was this uh, range of committed with capital letters. With G. capital letters yeah. and yeah, superscript, and, and then yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, what we would have in bin log, we would have uh, if we can see the indexes of vector as um, independent transactions, we would have this G capital uh, until some point. Yeah. Then, same multi engine transaction starts. It could be one engine non committed, then we would have G smaller case then another engine of that transaction committed in uppercase. And so we would have this yep. uh, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, various cases uh, G, but finally it all uh, ends with uh, either end of file or uh, fully uh, only maximum prepared or even not prepared transactions. So we would have uh, compare the single engine with multiple engine, we would have this perturbancy sort of mm. area in the bin yeah, yeah. which, yeah, I explained it why we must uh, uh, account uh, even single index in the vector. In the, in the presence of, uh, of a single index in the vector, we have to account the whole transaction as committed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear it now. Thanks a lot. Uh, that yeah. was, uh, Welcome. Uh, 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 thorough explanation. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I have uh, one last question for you, then we can move on to the next presentation. And uh, the question is, uh, uh, while you cover the multi-engine case, uh, do you actually have to make any changes to the logging format uh, of the replication events and bin log? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, uh, we can now continue with the question you asked, uh, how we know of uh, that multiple engines in the first place when we yeah. uh, analyze yeah. binlog events. Yeah, so uh, be before in the base code, uh, we have GTID event uh, describing transaction, and we also have uh, XSEED event describing transaction. Yeah. GTID is better for our purpose, even though in the central single server recovery, uh, we use uh, XSEED information. Uh, so now we turned uh, the, our implementation to GTID uh, because uh, it uh, it is more descriptive. <laughs> yeah, it offers a, a more spectrum of information, more yeah. more more dimensions mm -hmm. to play with. 
Indeed. And then, uh, you know, as a side effect, you can ask me next time <laughs> that what we're going to do is exceed event. Do we need it at all? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The answer is no. We don't need it in, in the future. But well, well, it, it, if it produces less overhead in, in development because it's a simpler concept, I, I think it's still worth to keep, to keep it. Right. Yeah, uh, but, the, the end of the transaction must be somehow indicated and uh, we could yeah, make many things to optimize, uh, but it's just a, 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 an area we could go in. But mm -hmm. uh, to the question, so GTID is uh, uh, augmented to uh, accept few more uh, uh, markers in it. So we have to uh, specify number of non-transactional engines, in the transaction, number of transactional engines in transaction. And uh, we also have to account uh, cases where uh, uh, both can be zero. <laughs> we also have this uh, specific, oh. yeah, uh, uh, so sort of legacy logging where an okay. ineffective transaction, which doesn't update data, still uh, ends up in the bin log. We have this situation. Yeah. So that's, yeah, how we. Mm, mm, manage who, to do it. That's so for this, yeah, edit counters. I see. Uh, Andre, thank you. That was uh, uh, very educative for me because I'm, I'm kind of a fan of replication. I'm trying to learn as much as possible. I don't have enough time like I'd like to uh, investigate this domain, uh, but I'm trying my best. Uh, and thanks a lot again for presenting. Uh, and hope we'll chat again and uh, work together again in the future. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Yeah, uh, uh, for yeah, questioning for the users and uh, all the best. Bye bye. Bye.